for people to be involved. So I'm going to walk you through uh, each one of these, um, and then when we get to image processing, I'm going to talk more about what we see at Jupiter and less about the, the outreach part of the mission. So planning. You saw how dynamic Jupiter is, right? You saw that movie. And so what that means is that you cannot have just one picture of Jupiter and then plan everything from there. Uh, you need to have regular updates that show you where the storms moved to, how they have evolved, and so on. So we have invent invited amateur astronomers the world over to come and, um, and supply us with the pictures they have taken from their own telescopes. And so um, when you log on to the site, you're given a fictitious name just in case you don't want your real name out there. And so, uh, and then people who have telescopes and take data contribute their images to the JunoCam site. And so that's, the, that's one of the many ways people contribute. And so we have a cadre of amateur astronomers, and um, this is a picture taken by uh, Ceres 00, who I actually happen to know is Christopher Go, and he's in the Philippines. And um, so we have the data of what Jupiter looked like on that particular day. We collect the data for two week intervals, and then uh, we create a cylindrical map out of those pictures. So the cylindrical map is what you see here. And then we invite the public to say, what do you find interesting? Is there an interesting storm? Uh, is it uh, an eddy along the belt zone interface? Um, what do you like? And tell us why we should take a picture there. Why should we take a high resolution picture, a close up picture, of your, your point of interest. And so the person, whoever they are, uh, gets to name their, their, their target, their point of interest. So like this one, this particular one, they like dark band, small white storm. There's some very creative names. Um, I somehow missed them. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, this is a, a place for some discussion. And so people can write comments on other people's points of interest and, and so on. Is this what, what were the circles? Oh, so these circles are the, the points of interest that were identified. So you, you see this cylindrical map, and you go and you, you basically draw a circle around what you think is interesting. And you can see, see these white storms all along here. That's actually called the string of pearls. Uh, and so those were the, pretty much the first ones right after the Great Red Spot <laughs> to be identified as places that we should take pictures. And so here's a couple of examples of targets that were actually identified, selected uh, by the public. Um, this is one of the white ovals. Uh, here's a little dark storm. And uh, so we, we, we take this quite seriously. Um, there is no imaging team. That's how seriously, basically, we take this. On a given pass close to Jupiter, only some of these are going to be uh, viewable in kind of a longitudinal swath. And so we say uh, then, okay, here's what we can view. What should we take a picture of? And that's where we put it to a vote. And then, um, you know, you can't do everything. We live within resources. And so this is our way of sharing our pain, in a sense, uh, with the public, is that, you know, you can't take a picture of everything on this pass. And what do you think is important? And as I said, there is no imaging team. So we basically strictly go by the vote. And then that brings me to the fourth component, which is actually processing the data. And so uh, we have, uh, again, off, on the same website, we have three galleries. Um, we have 
the raw data from the camera, then we have most recent from the public, which are all the processed versions that people have uploaded, and then from those we pick out some featured uh, submissions. So this is very different than the way NASA usually does things. There's usually a team of scientists that are going to analyze the data, and they are given what's called a short proprietary period where, uh, because they've done you know, a huge amount of work of preparation, they get to have the data kind of to themselves. We're not doing that because we're an outreach instrument. Instead, as soon as we get our data, we publish it on the web, this website. And so uh, what do we put up there? Um, our camera takes the data in little framelets as the spacecraft is spinning. So that's what you see over here. And some of our amateurs, I, I almost hesitate to call them amateurs, like to start with this data. We also assemble the strips of any of the different filters and so we put back together from these little strips, we make a blue, a green, and a red image. That's where other people like to start, because maybe they want to work with the black and white data and bring out the contrast. And then we create a color version, but it's not a very exciting color version. It's, it's a so-so, came out of the pipeline version. And, uh, but that's the <coughs> easiest one to work with, because you could take that and just simply run Photoshop So a little bit about the images, because um, they're a little weird, and that's because of the geometry. So the spacecraft is in this 53-day orbit, and most of that time, the camera is actually powered off. So all of our data, the most important data, gets taken in the two hours that it takes the spacecraft to travel from the North Pole to the South Pole. I cannot tell you how fast the spacecraft is going. It's really fast. But at about an hour before closest approach, which is what we call perigeo, uh, we're over the North Pole. Two hours later, we're over the South Pole. And in the middle, at the closest approach point, uh, again, we call it perigeo, we are skimming just like 3,000 kilometers above the cloud tops. So it's a very daring kind of a dive. But it's actually the safest thing we can do with our spacecraft because the radiation belts come out like this. And so we are actually diving underneath the radiation belts. So this is what a two-hour sequence of images looks like from Juno Camp. So we start out over the North Pole, and that's the North Pole there. So we're looking down, and we're actually seeing the entire globe of, of Jupiter. Then, um, as we get closer and closer, we're so close that we really only see a little piece of Jupiter. Then as we move further away, out to here, we're now looking at the South Pole, and we can see the entire uh, planet in our field of view. So you'll see some really strange looking stuff in the middle. <laughs> and so I was, just wanted to warn you. Um, this particular sequence was put together by uh, Gerald Eichstedt and Sean Doran, and you'll see their names a lot. These two have been super contributors to the website, just really phenomenal. Beautiful, beautiful work. So here's an example of just some simple image processing. Uh, and this was done by uh, Vishal Sharma. Uh, basically, on the left is our raw data, lightly processed. Um, and on the right is what he was able to do simply using Photoshop and Picasso. Because I'm going to show you a lot of enhanced color images, 
I wanted to start with, this is what Jupiter really looks like. This is the color it really is if you're looking through a 